Hi everyone, it's Paola. Welcome back to my channel, Art Graphic Design. That's what I do. If you want to follow me, see what I post, follow me on Instagram, check out below how you can join my Patreon. I have all the extra stuff, how you can support my channel. That's always linked. So you guys know that lately I've been doing like advice videos from design books I have. So I have like a big shelf, a big collection of my graphic design books and resources and I've been sharing them with you. So today's book that I wanted to pull from is Typographic Systems by Kimberly Elam. So in this series of me showing you what books I have and talking about what is in them, like the content, I don't want to be just like stealing from the book. I'm always like telling you guys like if you want this book, it's a great resource. I'm going to be telling you, explaining to you what the main themes are in this book. So let's discuss. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for creative people like you. I especially love it because it has classes in graphic design, illustration, photography, everything I love and hopefully you guys love too. And it's curated specifically for learning so there's no ads, there are always new classes on there. One of my favorite graphic designers, Paula Scher, has a class and it's called Dynamic Brand Identity, Designing Logos That Evolve. I'm obsessed with Paula Scher and I'm so happy she has a class. So find out what you can learn today. The first 1,000 people to use my link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring, back to the video. The thing that I think is really helpful about typographic systems is that it really goes into grids and layout composition that is not only applied in typography but can also be applied in all design elements. So we're gonna cover axial, radial, dilatational, <laughs> random, grid, modular, transitional, and bilateral. So starting with axial, axial means creating an axis on your design and having design elements on the left and right of those designs. What I do love about this book is that there are transparent pages to really highlight like what those grids are, what those alignments are and it's just really clear and it makes it nice. So like on this page it highlights the center square and then where the designs can come off of those center areas. And with this design stuff I am definitely not the type of person to focus on like grids and axis and stuff like that. I am the worst with it so this is helpful for me too. So it might be helpful for you if you're like kind of a seasoned designer but you know, you need some updates. So it says in the book that experience working with the axial system reveals that asymmetric arrangements are often more interesting than symmetrical ones. So you can actually kind of use some exercises within this book. There are initial phases, intermediate phases, and advanced phases of each of the systems and it kind of shows how you can grow those things and I've done this as like little charrettes which are like quick exercises and it's been very helpful throwing things together seeing what you can do really quickly and then kind of expanding on it you know the axial system also doesn't need to be a straight line you can do a very formative line you can also use that line as negative space or even as a full shape line to bounce your designs off of. Okay, so number two is the radial system, and this is designed from a central point of focus. So as you can see here, it's about having a focus point and then things are kind of cascading out. So radial, like a radius, a circle, and everything was kind of like fanfare out from it, you know? And then again, those exercises where you can work slow and small and then just get more complex. With type, this is definitely an interesting time to work with hierarchy, as in like larger type next to smaller type, kind of going around that circle shape. It's very interesting and unique, um, but it is very popular within a lot of older styles of design. Okay, number three is the dilatational system. I keep saying that weird. <laughs> this is design actually along a circular path. So it shows you here how in the design it would just follow a circle and then that's the transparent page just over top. But it's over top of this design, meaning this is like half circles, but it is the type following that shape. You know what I mean? I liked this quote from the book. It said, the text moves lyrically in concentric and intersecting circles. So very cool, like poetry basically, um, but with shape and form and not just words but it's a really cool thing to do i mean i am always using this type of shape i'm even using like wavy but that can also connect from like two circles like intersecting um that can still be wavy type so 
there's a lot to do with that. I think there's a lot you can do with the circular shapes that can make it look really dynamic, really fun, and have a lot of movement. Okay, four, the random system. So this basically means spontaneous design. I really like the idea that they touch on in the book of basically like throwing down sticks and then seeing where they land. It can be about clutter, it could be about lack of clutter. I mean, it can move up to that. And again, those exercises are gonna be really helpful with this one, especially because it is so random. You can really go all out with it. And again, with type, if you wanna work with typography more, you can really get into that and think like, how can I make this where it's even unreadable? How can I make this where it looks chaotic? How can I make this where a word stands out amongst the rest? It can be so many different things and you know random is random you can figure it out but definitely it follows rules i mean within the confines of a box you can definitely see what you are doing and be very intentional even with your randomness okay number five the grid system the bane of my existence i hate setting up grids but Every designer will tell you grids are important. A grid is designed with horizontal and vertical divisions. So here's a great example of the grid on top of a design. It has all of these lines going in the horizontal and vertical directions, and it breaks it up by an even amount of boxes. And it really breaks down like how that publication or editorial was put together. Um, I just think that a grid is very important to set up in your designs. I mean, at least following that idea when you are putting something together, especially like type-based work, editorial work. This one is a really good one to do exercises on. I mean, really learn the grid system because it can really, really help you. And even basing that off of like axial, like kind of going left to right, working with grids, working with lines from there, all of that goes together. Okay, it just started pouring down rain, so sorry if you hear that. <laughs> okay, and number six, the transitional system. So this is designed with shifted bands and layers. I think a great example of this is like left aligned text, then right aligned text, then centered aligned text, all being in one design. I think that's kind of an explanation of what that would look like. So with this one, there is change of direction, movement, again, like that radial one, but it's a completely different style of movement. And now the modular system. So this means design with standardized units. I love this example of it. I just think it looks so cool. It says here, the modular system is dependent on standardized non-objective elements or units that act as a ground to hold and contain text. So examples of this would be building blocks, storage containers, component systems. They have a picture of like a honeycomb. <laughs> so here are some examples of that. And now last but not least, the bilateral system. This is design that is symmetrical to an axis. So unlike the axial one, this one actually is formed on the axis. So the designs are straight on it, not left or right. This is definitely the most symmetrical of all of these ones because with a lot of these, you can work on tilts, you can work upside down, you can work with, you know, the curves of the circles. There's so many different like ways to do it, but this one's definitely very stagnant, I would say. But that's not a bad thing, don't worry. So in big chunks of text, like on a page, I would consider that bilateral. And you can still work on like slants, tilts, um, but it is still very focused to one centered object. Okay, so that was all I have for you from this book, the Typographic Systems book. It's so helpful and I love having it because it really helps me stay like on top of things when it comes to like grid systems and stuff like that and also just to have for memory um i love having this as a resource um if you liked this video please give it a like it really helps my channel out please subscribe if you're not subscribed and ring the bell so you can get notified when i upload um yeah this is a fun one and i love sharing this stuff with you guys so let me know if you want to see more resources tips advice stuff like that okay so i'll see you in my next video guys bye shaking my mouth. I forgot my ring again. <laughs> I keep starting to film but I don't have my ring on. <laughs>